Welcome back, BC Couch students. Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at example five, part A only of our topic 10.15. We're moving back into problems that are a little bit more likely to appear on the AP exam. We've seen a few of these in the past, and they're predominantly dependent upon you having a basic understanding of some of the most common power series. And in this particular problem, we're looking at the product of a power series. Uh, I uh, pretty much uh, give you a function here that does not disappoint. It says find the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for the given function f of x equal e to the x times the arctan of x. Now, as I said before many times, you could take this power series from scratch. You could develop it by taking several derivatives. Um, it would not be fun. I can look and see a product rule being used the first time around. And then if I'm not mistaken, I believe you might have a product and a quotient rule pretty much for the rest of the derivatives that you have to take because of the arctan of x producing the 1 over 1 plus x squared. Maybe you're thinking that along with me. And basically, the bottom line is this is going to be very difficult to do from scratch. So a better approach is for the student to know what are the two individual power series for e to the x and arctan of x, and then to go from there and figure out how to manipulate those results. And it just so happens that we might know these two power series, and they are revealed there. Now, I know that the e to the x is perhaps one that you're a little bit more familiar with than the arctan of x. And I know the arctan of x doesn't have our coveted heart that indicates that that's one that you typically would really, really want to know before the PC exam. And so maybe this problem here isn't so indicative of what you would see on the exam. Maybe you would see combinations of e to the x with sine of x or cosine of x or what have you. But arctan of x isn't a very tough one to memorize. In fact, it has a lot of characteristics that kind of remind me of the sine of x, except it does not have the factorials in the denominator. So it's not an impossible one to, to memorize. Now, as far as manipulating this to get your answer, to be honest, you really are working more with algebra than you are with calculus at this point. So for e to the x times the arctan of x, uh, there's a lot of ways that you could structure this, but the bottom line is, is that you are just simply taking the e to the x function or power series for that function, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus some other stuff. And you're going to multiply that by 1 minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over five, minus x to the seventh over seven, plus some other stuff, and there you have it. Now, I know that this might be one's worst nightmare algebraically. It's like, whoa, I have to take a four-term expression and multiply it by another four-term expression? I mean, I, that's worse than FOIL. I don't know how many other letters you'd have to use. F, O, I, L, M for the middle, inside middle, outside middle. What, what would it look like? Well, the key, the key here is that you don't need to find every single term. You only need to find the first three non-zero terms. So one of the ways that I would suggest doing this is just to take your very first value in your e to the x expression, 1, and start the process. Multiply him by the first term in the second expression. And it's a pretty ironclad guarantee that one is likely going to be one of those first three non-zero terms. We'll continue this and we'll multiply one by the second piece, negative x cubed over three. And of course that would be minus x cubed over three. And maybe, maybe not, I don't know yet. That could be one of your terms we're, we're going to see. But by the time you continue to multiply 1 by the x to the 5th and the x to the 7th, it's very likely that you're going to be getting terms that have powers that are probably higher than what would exist in the first three non-zero terms. If that turns out to be a lie, then we can always go back and work some more. So we continue by going to the next term, x. And if I multiply that 
let's use a color here that stands out a bit. If we multiply that by one, then that's a pretty good indication plus X might be one of the terms that I'm looking for. How about if I go one more? X times X to the fourth over three with the negative. You know, I, I just, I don't feel it. I don't know if that's going to be one of the terms that I need. So uh, I'll probably not include it, but we'll see here in a bit. I don't think I'm gonna go any more with my X term. So I think we can now hop on over to the X squared over two factorial. I'm gonna multiply that by one, and that gives me plus x squared over two factorial. But if I notice that if I go any farther, if I multiply this x squared term by this x to the third, I'm already at an x to the fifth, way more than what I need. And I look at this and I can come to the conclusion that the first three non-zero terms in ascending order are going to be those three guys. We don't even need that cubic or that fourth degree. And we're very guaranteed that there can't be any more terms produced that have either a zero power, one power, or second power of x because we're dealing with some powers that are pretty big the rest of the way. So your final answer for this would just simply be this is approximately one plus x plus either x squared over two factorial or you could say x over uh, x squared over just two. And that would be your first three non-zero terms. Hopefully this helps. We'll see you here in a little bit for part B of example five.